X situation, students say this is a must to survive situations. This is going to be a quick intro to blocking in Rhino. I will show you the basics on how to get blocking started and how to work with it in a file. Blocking is another way to keep your file size down. Um, it really helps with um, when you have repetitive geometry uh, or solids or anything and um, instead of having all those lines, uh, polylines or shapes, you just have instances of them. So. Real quick, this is a file that I had, um, and we're just going to block these two. So you want to select them, type out block. Um, it asks you to select a base point, so I usually just select a point on the bottom um, for one of the figures, and then you can name it. So I'm going to name it Rect um, Cone, and then I always do like a number sequence um, in case there are multiple variations, I can kind of keep track of them. You can do more here. Um, I don't when I'm uh, modeling super quickly. So <clears throat> once you click on it, you'll notice it's kind of grouped together now. Um, and here in the object properties panels, you can see that it is considered a block instance. It is no longer um, an object. So here you'll see it is a closed solid poly surface. This is a a closed extrusion. Um, these are an instance. So um, it is no longer considered a geometry. It is just an instance of that block. Uh, the block itself is in this cone layer, but if we open it, which you can do by double clicking, um, see how it grays everything else and only the items in the block instance are um, in color. The different items <clears throat> so this is now a closed solid poly surface. It's in the cone layer. This one, purple box layer, closed extrusion. They're in different layers. So you can have items in a block in different layers where the block instance itself resides on a different layer. Um, can be helpful if you still want to have a different amount of control on things. Um, it can be a bit frustrating if you're trying to purge, for example, layers and you have multiple items in multiple layers um, and because of that the command purge may be helpful. Um, so here in this block edit um, little manager box um, you can you have options to add objects, remove objects, um, reset the base point. This is the block instance name. If you have other block instances in this um, you, you can have blocks within blocks. So that'll those will come up here. Um, and show up in that list. Um, another thing you can do is you can type block. You see the different options here. Block edit is to edit that instance, which I did by double clicking block manager. Let's go into that. Um, so these blocks are defined in different ways. Um, here you can see the name. Um, I'll get to this in a second. So let's look at the block definition type. Right now it's embedded. The geometry exists within the file we are working on and only within the file. We can go to embedded and linked um, where it is both embedded and it is a file that is, or an instance that is linked from a file. So the same way you link um, pictures or other files in, for example, like Illustrator or Photoshop, you can do that here as well. Or you could just have it be linked. Um, that means that it's not existing in the file. If you share the file, you're going to have to share the link, etc. Um, the layer style, this only applies when it's linked. You can either set it as active where it's actually showing the layers or it's populating the layer if it already exists or it's a reference where it kind of appears as the file name and then you can expand it and show the layers similar to when we work sessioned it. Um, so I'm gonna show you how you can link a block. Um, if you already have an item that is blocked in its own separate file, you can just um, insert it. Um, and that is, you know, you could type insert, you can come in here, insert, um, and you can insert different um, blocks as well. You can insert blocks that exist within the file already as well. Um, so let me just show you how you can create um, a link based off of an instance you have already. So I just created that. Um, I'm going to go into properties. 
actually, sorry, I am going to export it. Um, and it will export it as a file itself, just that block instance. So I'm going to call it rec cone, and this one will actually be 02. So let's save that. Um, so now we've just exported the file. I go into properties. Um, let's link it. If we go in here, um, we can select the file we want to link. And I will actually make this a reference so you can see how that shows up there. Okay, so you see that appears there. Oh, I need to close out of that. Um, so yeah, here you can update it if um, the file changes. Um, this, as you can see, lists blocks definition that contains the selected block as a nested block. So like I said, you could have blocks within blocks. Um, that'll help out with that. The number of instances instances the block in the model appears um, so you can just kind of hover over and see what that is um, as you can see here the link status is up to date um, you can change whether they're always updating um, or if they prompt you to update or they never update so that's kind of up to your preference um, so here it's a linked file now so it means if I try to double click and edit um, it won't let you do that in this file. You will have to open the other file and edit it in that file. Um, so let's just wait on that. So pluses and minuses to having it embedded in the file versus having it be a linked file. Um, you'll be having to open different Rhino files um, to edit any linked files, or if it's a set design, then it might even be best just to link it. Um, but here you can um, edit it. Let's just turn that 90 degrees. Um, let's leave it around there. Let's file, save. Um, and just close out. So now we close it out. It updated. Um, so there you have that. Um, you can copy these different instances. Uh, so here we have multiple instances. Um, what you can also do, which um, let's see, you can explode it. And when you explode it, it takes those objects out of the block. And that's the best way um, to kind of start another block. So here, um, these are objects themselves again. You can see here, close extrusion, close solid, solid poly surface. Um, and they created their own um, layer. So now those exist here. You can see that. Um, they keep those layer properties. Um, so let's block it again. Or actually, I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to change the geometry slightly. And I'm going to block it again. Define a base point. And I'm going to name it um, that same name. Um, so you can see what happens if I replace it with the same name. It changes it. Um, usually, if it's linked, it will change it to what the linked file is. Um, if it's not linked, it will change the other blocks based on that new edit. Um, so here, let's do this. Block. Uh, rect blip 01 and let's change it oh, so let's explode this one sorry this is going to be just block
Oh, I actually don't remember what it was called. Okay. Block. Okay, so here you can see the embedded ones. Um, they changed to that kind of uh, configuration. Um, so something to keep in mind, you want to give each block a different name. Um, in this instance, if I were to um, edit the block and I were to remove an object, let's remove that one, press enter. Um, it keeps that object there, removes it from the other instances. If I were to come in, let's create an object, okay. <laughs> Block edit. So add object. Let's add this one in. Enter. There we go. Okay. So all those spheres appeared relative to that square. Um, okay. One other thing to remember with um, blocks is that uh, if you want to edit the block itself, um, let's say you just want to make something smaller um, and you do that, um, it will corrupt the block instance. So you really can't edit blocks unless you open it up or you go into block edit. Um, if you edit it and you try to open it or you try to do other things, you might get this error message, unable to edit non-uniformly scaled block instances. Um, they just don't behave like regular geometry. Um, so you have to remember that they are instances, not geometry. Um, you want to go in through double clicking or block edit. Um, and that's already, you know, that's a corrupted file. You want to find uh, an original one. Um, if you don't want all of your instances to be copied, um, I recommend making a copy, exploding it, um, and then using those. If you you can also um, go in, control copy, um, control C, control V, so copy and paste. Um, so here I deleted that. I'll paste them in the same spot, and there they appear. Um, and now you can change those, edit them if you need them in the same space um, and location. Um, you kind of don't want to drag or you don't want to explode for any reason. Um, but exploding usually works and then you can reblock and just name it a different name. Um, like I, I think that's why number sequences are important to me. Um, you can even start getting more descriptive there. Um, and like I said, you can insert blocks from the file that have already been embedded. Here you can see all the different blocks we have in this file. Um, and you can insert them as a block instance as they exist, groups, individual objects, etc. cetera. Um, something to note if, for example, let's say you delete all of the black block objects in the file, um, they still exist within um, the file just because the you don't see the, the instance in there. Um, they are still in the file. Um, so you could pick whichever one you want. Don't panic because it was deleted. And there they are. Um, you can kind of bring them back. Um, yeah. So super helpful. It will help with um, keeping your file sizes down. And if you're linking them, you can share them um, with other people and just use the linked files. And eventually you can also um, embed them if you go into the properties. Um, you can change it back into an embedded file. Um, and when we actually rename that file uh, from the embedded instance, it changed it, so it unlinked it. Um, so there you have it, blocks. They're great.